It's October the 10th, 2016. I'm Dana Durford, somewhere, hang on. The nuclearproctologist.org. What's going on in this little world of radioactive fallout? And we were gonna bang right into it. I notice issues, hang on. It's easier to do it that way than it is the other way. <laughs> we are going to be talking about radioactive fallout, like you can't even imagine. We're talking about a non-interrupted line of radiation stretches right across the Pacific, right across Canada, right across North America, the Atlantic, the Pacific, of course, uh, European countries. This model is countdown on day three, four, five, six, seven, the bottom right hand corner. There's two models coming up. We're gonna come over and say hi to everybody in a bit. There's two models, there's North America, it's covered. The models are not based upon the inventory, so let's come back and talk about that a whole lot. Um, with a whole lot of documentation. We have been told repeatedly, and we wind down the music, we have been told repeatedly that there was no radioactive fallout that hit North America. And so that is a 100% gonna be burnt at the stakes here today. And hi to everybody in the comments section. Hugs for everybody. I know this is an amazingly difficult. I see the Geiger counter now. Camera smurfed. I'll let it hang there for a while. This has been a long and difficult, incredible uh, five and a half years. I gotta fix the camera one more time. Okay, here we go. What we are talking about is just these dispersals. This is a Canadian model from Health Canada. No, Dana, it's not your Photoshop. No, it didn't. It's Health Canada. There's the people who authored it. And several studies had already existed on the modeling. And this is what they say, the Fukushima plume provided nice opportunities. You got any idea how twisted that statement is? The third sentence, study focuses on the arrival of the plume over southwestern British Columbia. They flew a plane, they took samples every 15 minutes. And here was this invisible plume coming into the coastline. Completely invisible, but not ignored not now japan was going to move the capital away from tokyo japan cruise faces a hundred year battle many many people have reported on fukushima many media this is the global mail canadian political leader shocked now the global mail also demonized me but now fear-mongering see why would they say the words fear mongering when you're talking about something that we talk about dirty bombs all the time, terrorists all the time, but if there's an accident and a release and it might show up, it's considered fear mongering? That's the Globe and Mail, the biggest producers, uranium stocks, robbing everybody in North America. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima. Here's a clip from Japan. And they have a model from their local university. Computer simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world from the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The simulation was created by a group of researchers of, at the University of Tokyo and Kyushu University and released on Wednesday. The simulation is based on the scenario in which contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Okay, 
Now, before we show that, it's based upon releases, not the, the busted reactors, the destroyed reactors, the lost reactor cores that were in the holding pools for 10 years, 10 years of fuel on top of each building. We'll finish that off. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters into the air. That's three miles. It was then carried by westerly winds and spread over the Pacific Ocean. The images indicate that... Now, that was just hitting North America. On the fourth day after the being, being vented, the substances reached the west coast. Now, everything that hits the mountain washes back down to your coastline. But that doesn't matter when you consider how much you're looking at and how long it takes that to rain out. If it was, but it's not, never stopped coming out of the source if you watched it. Most of the United States, and on the, on the seventh day, they approached Iceland after crossing the Atlantic. So we're all the way across North America, all the way across Pacific. The radiation was down to one billionth level compared to when it was emitted on March 14th. One billionth level. Uh, this is Canadian model as it hits the coastline. These are other models, 3,680 hours uh, at, in the bottom right-hand corner after 468, but it never stopped coming out. It uh, never stopped coming out. And these models are just to give you an idea of the source coming out of Japan. Now, these numbers, there was over 20,000 people died, but 3,000 rads is not the number that was hitting North America, to my understanding. But uh, Reactor 3 could easily have done that, so we don't know for sure. This is the plume emanating out of the reactors in Japan. And then you see the Navy uh, ships that were offshore, their watches, digital watches stopped. This is a 180-hour forecast. I'm not sure about that model. Uh, March to 20th. Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm going to come back over to some headlines. I'm going to run over and say hi to everybody. We're going to talk about the lecture coming up this week and in two weeks' time. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima, and that you'll be fighting the radiation for tens of thousands of years. You'll be putting sarcophaguses over Chernobyl for the next 3,000 years, or every 20 years, if you're lucky, it'll last that long. Canada suspends mobile radiation measurements around Vancouver, B.C., uh, April of 4, as the plume was coming in. Fukushima melted fuel is drifting into the ocean onto land, lacking any containment. It ends up on the coastline and blows in the communities. And then people get an exceptional dose. And this will go on for millenniums. Ernie Gunnarsson, ocean is already contaminated from deluge of the Fukushima toxic water and will stop eating fish 2013, certainly. Should have stopped eating it within 45 days. Um, let's jump to the other one. Let's watch this. This was on uh, TV. Now, the plume they're showing you is not the melted reactors. It's just vented releases. But there was no one there to vent it, and there was no way to vent it. Let's come up and look at the building so we know what we're talking about if you're not familiar with it. See, there's no way to vent something when it was exposed. That's the top of that building. And the top left-hand corner and right-hand corner are the reactor cores that are stored for 10 years. The center is the bulb on the top of the reactor. This building right now is around 47 sievers, and 47 sievers will kill you in about a minute and a half or so. Five sievers will kill you in about two weeks, you'll die. Uh, th these buildings are gone. I could bring me in there if I want to. Reactor 3 is completely gone. And look at the center of the building, the reactor cores at the top, and then look at the poles at the top. Now look at Unit 3. And that's what, these models are not including any of this whatsoever. 
And so here's number four. Completely destroyed. Six reactor cores minimum. This is what it looks like after they tore it down. And think about the structure itself. So the models we're, gonna, we're looking at and we're talking about in the headlines don't include the five reactors and the reactor core that was running in that number one. They don't include number two meltdown and the loss of its inventory of five more. Six in each of them. So that's 12 reactors. This is six reactors. which was mixed oxide fuels, two million times worse than any other reactor. And the mixed oxide fuel is where they reclaim uranium plutonium. Now see, if you add up the weight of the reactors and the spent fuel pool, the reactor cores, you're still not taking into account the chain reactions consuming water, or rain, or snow, or rocks, and rebar, and steel, and I-beams, and um, gravel, and everything else as it eats its way into the earth. So it's able to produce many times more elements than the actual pound each of the reactors. This is number three. It's completely gone. Here's the building. What you're looking at is the bottom cross from me is right here. And the same thing applicable for reactor four. And remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, five lanes of traffic around the planet. And was that the spot I left off? No. I never find that spot again. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, by the way, it was me up in um, Banfield uh, about a month ago. I was on the boat. I had to go in and get steering fluid. It's not my boat. That's not my boat. That's me heading out, right? Um, and this is a, a, a this is a Banfield Marine Science Center. Now I went up there after surveying their coastline. There's supposed to be seven thousand species. I only found twelve, maybe fourteen if I looked really hard. Uh, but as you can see in the wildest spot, now these guys see me coming up the driveway, and they ran out and barred me. Dana Durnford, get out of here. Because they're not telling you that all the species are gone. See, I was going to ask them how come there's only 14 instead of 7,000 species. But I went out on that shoreline and we done a four hour video when I came back about that. We found these little seals. That was all I found there. And there was a patch with a couple of hundred birds. But uh, the boats didn't have any birds around them whatsoever. And I'll get on with the rest of this documentation just because I put it in that one. Okay. And so all of Western U.S., most of East Coast, Midwest, Canada, covered with airborne particles at various altitudes. I forgot to say hi to everybody. I'm going to say hi. Hi, everybody. And... Dear, I zoomed in, Dana. You zoomed in, Dana. That's for art is Lani. Lani got the age of fission. Isotope, hokey pokey, Alex, Shani, CJ, Crystal, Elaine. And Elaine is doing the moderating. Lane is doing the moderating as much as she can handle it. And it's a hard job. It's the worst job on the planet besides the one I got. And uh, it was Thanksgiving here today. I was supposed to rent out the big facility for the second show of the lectures that I'm going to be doing here. And you got to realize we're on to it. There's all kinds of fishermen. There's all kinds of people eating, uh, living by the ocean all their life. There's all kinds of people uh, that got all kinds of farms around here. And so we're putting um, flyers around town. They're being removed. We're replacing them. 
We're uh, also going to be in a newspaper, a quarter page ad on Wednesday. So there's no getting away from it. And so it's going to be pretty rough for the next uh, couple of weeks. And we got to weather the storm. We will. Uh, we got the second lecture coming up. This is going to produce a, a, an incredible amount of uh, blowback for sure. There's no way of getting around. It's just the ad in the paper is going to create a, a big divide. And so we got two lectures lined up for the community. The first one is this Friday. I have security hired, and they will be in uniform, and they will call the police if people are abusive or are not trying to have a debate or a conversation. This is a lecture. This is not a place to come and bash me. I will answer any questions if given the opportunity, but they have to be questions, not bashing. And so the police will come and take you away if you're abusive. Make no mistake about us at both of these lectures and future lectures. And that we need a way forward. Canada uh, doesn't deserve what's happening to it. The people of British Columbia deserve to know the difference. There is no way to hide it. There's no way to mitigate it unless we deal with it, unless we admit we got the problem. And people are thinking that I'm the only person that talks about it or something, or I'm the guy who's making all the fuss, but it's not really a fuss. Are people who refuse to look at the documentation. Stream locked on Elaine. Refresh, it'll do that. Uh, hi, one. Hi, everybody. Karen, Shani, Censor. Sorry, bro. Uh, but I do take people's comments down if they're going to be a distraction or not on topic. It's not an offense. It's not in personal. Unless it's... You know, if it is personal, then that person would be gone. I wouldn't be talking about it. Hi, Crystal. But I, I will do that to anybody. There is nobody that I won't delete their comment if it's not on topic and I don't like it. It's gone. We don't want the distraction. We can't afford the distraction. We don't get a second chance. This is literally humanity's last stand. And we have to make it, and we have to make it now. And that's why I'm doing the lectures. That's why I'm moving into that venue. That's why I'm challenging that entire system and every person on the planet. I'm challenging them to go prove me wrong or stand in solidarity with the moral and ethical thing. We can't keep pretending there's 3 billion people dependent upon the Pacific Ocean. We can't, we don't have time um, to pretend. We don't have time for rational conversations in one sense either because they've taken that ability away over six years. I'll get it right at some point. All of Western Canada, everything covered in that plume. It assimilates into your food. It's Japan. Look, it's not it's never, never just a plume. It's, it's constant. It doesn't stop coming out. Now it's over North America, but it's, it never stopped coming out. It never stopped coming out. It's not just a plume. The people who tell you that is just a plume or there's nothing there or there's nothing to worry about are um, guilty of major crimes. These are That's murder to tell you not to worry about it. It's murder to tell you that there's more natural radiation than man-made. That is the most ludicrous, most unimaginable statement conceivable. But all of the Pacific, all of North America, all of the Northern Hemisphere, all the Pacific Ocean, because the model only stopped after so many days, but the plume didn't, right? That didn't. Because once you go into chain reaction at 9,000 degrees for high temperatures, everything is a plume that comes out. The steam that's coming out is actually a plume. But the radiation is invisible. We use colors. By the way, purple is for potassium, and there's no potassium comes out of the reactor. The model is based upon cesium, but cesium, if you burn it, is not purple. French map of cesium. This model, I like the model when I get advertisement every time I use it. That's okay. 
Now, watch the model coming out of Japan. It's not it's never going to stop coming out of Japan. We're going to go back, bang in the headlines, come back. I got such a mount of this to get through. And we got lots of time, 40 minutes, but we won't get through it all, but we're going to try. We're going to try because these videos in particular are so important. These videos, this video today is... See, I see an end to the misery. I see an end, and it's through the lectures. It's going to be an instant blowback, instant ground roots operations that are independent of me, that are able to understand it and be motivated on their own without me and able to motivate other people. Because we talk to each other in all the communities throughout British Columbia. We have friends and families and loved ones, and they all use Facebook and all the other stuff and emails. And so the lectures are going to be such a divide in this town for the next two weeks until the second lecture. But what it is, is we have so many of these presentations that the people can't wait and become divisive, are going to sit around with their friends, are going to make them watch maybe this video here and say, hey, you know, maybe Dana didn't cause the meltdowns in Fukushima. Maybe Dana's not lying. Maybe Dana is the good guy. Maybe Dana has done everything imaginable to try to save us and help us and inform us. Maybe Dana, you know, um, should be not vilified and demonized and attacked and everything else. Maybe, maybe Dana is somebody that the world is, is, might be stuck with it because I'm so prolific, but only because of the desperation only because of an extinction event on the Pacific Ocean. Let's come over and do another bunch of headlines. Keep it moving. Inexplicable that the EPA shut down Fukushima after finding high levels of radiation in the drinking water. And the rainwater in Boys had the highest levels, but uh, these were nodding. This was just like one headline. There's thousands of these headlines. See. I'm the one who might have got traction. I'm the one that causes the controversy because I can act out like a normal human being. I speak in normal terminology. I speak from experience. I have covered 9,000 headlines like this before I went on the ocean. I aggregated 13,500 of them, 5,000 pictures. Before Fukushima, I had 7,000 lectures. Yale and Berkeley and Stanford and Oxford and MIT and every organization imaginable. See, and I'd done every industry in both oceans and on both oceans. Everything. New York Times contributor confirms California rainwater. See, that's game over for California. They should have immediately tried to come up with solutions, not wait and hope everybody just died of their illnesses and their cancer is the last one to show up. There's 1,800 diseases show up before cancer. Canadian radiation test was just one of them. This was uh, April the 8th, 2011. The accident was March 11, 2011, 311 11 But so 100 times U.S. drinking water limit, and Americans had been up in their limits forever. But Canada has uranium, and Canada would do anything to keep. Now, the uranium stocks went down for almost six years straight. It's not going to go up. The Globe and Mail is out there fleecing everybody. you got to buy the uranium stocks. you got to buy this one. Put your money. This is pushed for a violent move up. All we got to do is arrest Dana Durnford. But it didn't work because I won't go away. Kill me, I still won't go away. I dominate the internet now. Thank goodness. 18,000 times above the drinking water standards. So cancer doesn't show up for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. But we have to plan ahead. We have to plan because this is never going to stop until we do. This is never going to go and be dealt with until we deal with it. 
What are you going to leave it for maybe the next generation? You do that, there won't be a third one. We see an extinction event in the Pacific Ocean. I'm not going to cover it right now, but U.S. West Coast to be hard hit. The North Pacific are the Kurosha current transporting radioactive materials to America and North America. We'll come back over to those models. Let me cover that one. A nuclear expert horrified that the feds abandoned the radiation monitoring. I must have copy-pasted that twice accidentally. Accumulated cesium-137. It's the same level as the West Coast and the East Coast. Now, anybody that, anybody that thinks that that's not true need only look at the models. That's hitting British Columbia right now. And that's not a great model. Let's skip it ahead. This is a better model. See Japan in the far corner to the left? It doesn't stop coming out, ba-boom. It doesn't stop coming out of Japan, ba-boom, and cover the entire country. But it's only based upon venting like the video you watched earlier. See, it doesn't stop coming out. That's Japan. And over there is North America. So now it's going across the Pacific. And the date on that is the 16th, 17th. So eight, uh, seven days later, it's over North America. Nine days later, it's across Canada, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, heavily covered. All of Canada, all of the Northwest Territories, Iceland, Greenland. But the big plumes keep running back down to the coastline because you're on the Pacific Ocean if you're in British Columbia or on the American West Coast. Now, this is the Norwegian Institute for Air Research, but the model is only based up on a couple of days of venting. It's not based up on the melted reactors that I showed you earlier, yeah? Okay, hang on. Here's Noah's model. This is based up on 40 days. So the model doesn't include the 24 reactors that are missing. It doesn't include the spent common fuel pools that were washed away with millions of pounds over decades of fuel stored on the ground. It doesn't include the nuclear holding sites in the 400 kilometers of Japan that was eviscerated like a wood chipper. It doesn't include the salt water, the, hydrogen, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from spraying salt water for 40 days. It doesn't include the cannibalizing of the buildings in the chain reaction in this period of time. All it includes is just a, a one or two isotopes. It doesn't include the, the thousands and thousands of man-made isotopes that are created by man and that nothing on the planet has an immune system for. That's a 40-day model. But see, it never stopped coming out, right? It, just because it stopped at 40 days don't mean that that did. Oh, it all turned to dust after 40 days. No. This is Francis Institute uh, doing a model. And boom, there's North America. The Pacific is completely covered. Now, everything west of the Rocky Mountains washes back down. The clouds will come in heavy. The clouds come in heavy every day anyway. They hit the Rocky Mountains, lose a lot of their payloads. They rise up, go over the Rocky Mountains. But most of their payloads are being lost at the Rocky Mountains. That gets washed back down to the Pacific coastline. That's, that's why we don't see the glaciers in British Columbia, Canada. They're gone. And, but what that means is that that cold water doesn't regulate uh, the estuaries, the lakes, the rivers, the streams. doesn't so the insects and the trout and the salmon because the rivers unless you have a lot of rain that's that summer then the trout and two years ago we seen the salmon were spawning out in the estuaries and if it wasn't for the hatcheries we probably wouldn't even seen them show back up the ones we did see and that all the whales have died on the coastline because 
deer habitat was uh, destroyed, and I documented that. It's all up at the nuclearproctologist.org. But what you're looking at uh, is confusing, I know. It's confusing because you can't see it, and you can't smell it, and you can't taste it, and you can't hear it. Um, i got to reset that. So if you could see it, it would look something like this. If you could see the radiation, this is what it would look like around you, minimum, all the time. And if you could see radiation, we wouldn't have this issue. We wouldn't have these conversations. But because nuclear, we know how it works, we know how much uh, it can produce in just a tiny amount. So natural radiation, uh, if you had a gram of it the size of the top of your pinky, uh, you can eat it and it can't hurt you. If you had a gram of a man-made, it would kill you before you can pick it up. And it would kill everybody else for, for millions of years that tried to pick it up. Because it's uh, fuel itself. It's not like an isotope, it's a fuel. So it's emitting gamma shine and alpha and neutron shine. But here's the difference, though, is that a gram of natural stuff like potassium-40, like bananas or potato chips and stuff, or stuff that's naturally around, your body's acclimated to that through genetic superior selection like every other creature on the planet and like every um, flora and flora and all the uh, animal kingdom, insect and, and uh, plant kingdom is acclimated to the natural stuff. We are made of it, so it doesn't mean nothing. Except they use it uh, academically wise to confuse you, manipulate you, and deceive you. And so the difference being is that now, we had 220 million becquels of iodine-129 in British Columbia, yeah, per liter of rainwater right after Fukushima. Uh, but at the same time, you would have had uh, slightly less than that, around 200 million becquels in the same liter of iodine-133. And you would have had um, one-third of that, so about 70, uh, 80, 20. Okay, so around, like there's numbers, there's mathematical ways of extrapolating how much of the other isotopes were there. That's how you do it. These are considered tracers for the most part. So a gram of natural can't hurt you, and it's got 160 atoms. The rest of it is just nature. But those atoms can't hurt you. Those emitters can't hurt you. Your body craves them. That's natural stuff. It doesn't mean nothing. It's irrelevant. You can't make a dirty bomb out of it. You can't make a nuclear weapon. You can't run a reactor on potato chips and bananas, okay? Even though uh, the academic sector will be telling you, if you go look, that uh, it's like a banana and a potato chip. That's an absolute fabrication. It's an absolute abomination that these people are constantly doing that and have been for 70 years. But a gram of natural stuff has... 88 curries of atoms. And a curry is 37 billion. So you got 88 times 37 billion for one gram, and you got 160,000 that can't hurt you in the other gram. So 88 times 37 billion atoms that can, every one of them, any, a single one of them, will cause a cancer, uh, autism, diabetes and heart, liver, lung. Di you know, the, these are um, 1,800 diseases will show up before. Uh, before the cancer. And Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute has done a plethora of studies. Curium isotopes, which acts just like plutonium uranium when it's in uh, humans or animals, is the major byproduct, not iodine, not cesium, they're tracers. So in this study, 144 beagle dogs, the dogs inhaled one. They weren't eating it in their food or drinking it in their water or cooking their food in it or washing their clothing in it or anything else. And that every animal died within about five years, beginning after about 1.5 years. But that was just one dose. That wasn't having it floating around in like the models that we're looking at. So the studies on the animals showed every animal died in every study. Um, Every animal died in every study. Hang on. Did I smurf that up or something? I guess so, right? Hang on. 
Oh, yeah, I know where I put it. Sometimes I don't know where I put stuff, see? Accumulated cesium deposits near the U.S. East Coast at the same levels as the West Coast. And the U.S. East Coast is on line with the Canadian East Coast or one in the same part of it. There are separations. So here was the Globe and Mail 2015 trying to sell uranium stocks. Oh, you got to buy it. Oh, yeah. Grab spent $2.5 billion. So they were fleecing $2.5 billion at the same time coming after me constantly. Just after that date, they were next month, they were attacking me. Right? To keep their stocks alive. Oh, wrong headline. April 16th forecast showed radiation, uh, radioactive clouds stretching from Texas to Canada. And just because you can't see it, the modeling, see? It's like modeling force fire. You know the particles are going through. You know the, the amount roughly. But in Japan, they didn't use that. They just used man-made releases. But there was no way. See, there was no way. Let me explain that to you. Oh, I got to bring it up. See, there was no way. I'll take that down for a second. There was no way to plug in power to that. Right? There was no fuel pool to plug power into with six or five reactor cores minimum, 10 years of fuel. Sometimes they change the fuel every year. There could have been many more reactor cores we don't know about. There was 9 million pounds on the ground when the tsunami ran through. So when the tsunami ran through, there was 9 million, that's the Fukushima Daiichi, there was 9 million pounds. Now, if you don't understand that, what you got to think about, what did the tsunami do to the rest of the country? Think about that part. Because everything at the nuclear power plant is pretty well classified. But that's the official pictures. But when you look at the rest of the country, you kind of get a handle on what happened to the nuclear power plant, yeah? You kind of wrap your mind around a little bit, don't you? You kind of say like, okay, well, Dana, you know, um, it was just one power plant. Well, you'd be wrong. It was just one nuclear holding site. Well, you'd be wrong. It was just one common spent fuel pool. Well, you would be wrong. And that none of these things I just said were in the models. But the numbers you're looking at are people that died. The numbers, numbers in the yellow are the people that are missing. The distance you're looking at is 400 kilometers. And in that same spot was many reactors and many spent fuel pools and many common fuel pools and many storage sites. And what do you think? Do you think that they survived if they were sitting right there? Do you think they're okay if they were sitting right there? Do you think they were... These, are, these don't have any protective barriers around them. These are poles. Do you think that they're okay like that? Do you think that they might not have ended up there? Do you think that building is intact? Do you think that is fake? Do you think that is normal? When it's released into the environment, it does this forever and ever and ever. That I didn't create the accident is not my fault. I don't like it any more than anybody else. I like I don't like it. But they claim that uh, many journalists. You can go back and you'll see a video I recently, a few days back. I posted a short two-minute video or so, where they say they're inside of that building. That building there is inside of that. And this is what they've been telling the world now for almost six years, that it looks like that when in reality it looks like this. And that that lie is not tenable. That we can't keep the lie a lie forever. Just like the Pacific Ocean has died, everything else will die behind it if we don't get our acts together. If we don't come up with solutions. And the only way we're going to come up with solutions is if we go to bat. The only way we're going to come up with solutions is if we admit we got a problem. The only way we come up with solutions is if we admit that that is not inside of that. Or that dad is not inside of that. The reactor core was straight up the center to the very top, same as the fuel poles. They don't exist in that building. They're gone. They tore it all down, yeah? Just keep going. And that the models are many. Australia, Austria model. You've got the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. You've got um, URAD project. You know, many, 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 Francis Institute. Let's keep going. So these lectures that are coming up is the beginning and the way forward. 
this is you know, this is the way it has to go. That the grassroots movement has to come from somewhere. And pre, you know, ten years ago, it would have came from a community. Some community would have rallied around whoever it was was saying, "Hey, wait a second, here's the truth." And so we need to do that in my community. And trust me, I don't like it any worse than anybody else. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be. I don't want this job. Last, I'm the last person on the planet that wants this job. But I also understand that I'm one of the few people that can take it. They're willing to take it. That are able to understand it and are able to to sympathize, sympathize, and understand grief and understand loss and understand the agony that is is not my fault. I didn't create the accident. It's not my fault. I didn't kill the Pacific Ocean. And it's not my fault for going out and taking pictures of it and saying, hey, we got an issue. And it's not my fault that I've been vilified now for many years without merit. And that I have struggled and clawed and fought my way to tell, to tell this story because it has to be told and it has to be told appropriately. And that this community is capable, like any other community, no matter where I was to, I would do the same thing. At some point, I hope, I pray that I would have what it takes to do that. But you got to realize the things I talk about are not popular, but they're necessary, that they're not going to go away. They're not going to disappear. 20 million particles of radioactive to iodine, 131. That's uh, during post-Fukushima peak. Now, November of 2011, it was still coming out full steam. We know that for sure, verified. But now we know, whenever you see iodine, it means the chain reaction is ongoing. But whenever you see iodine, it's just a tracer. So there was 10 times more iodine 132, 30 times more iodine 133, 31 times more iodine 129 in the same liter of water. But the reactors don't run on uranium or uh, iodine 131. They run on uranium and plutonium. This is just the signature of the reactor, the chain reaction. And it is very serious that in Germany, they were packaging up waste at five becquels, at five particles. In France, it was 17 particles on the day of Fukushima. And that these numbers are brutal numbers. These are unimaginable numbers. There is no terrorist on the planet can create a dirty bomb that would have these kind of numbers. These are extraordinary. 30 million bags have been picked up in Fukushima that are one ton each. That were right across from Japan. The wind comes here in several days. The jet stream's at 100 miles per hour. It's here in a little over three days. The ocean current at five miles per hour, 24 hours a day, is here in 45 days. And that the winds were blowing here. And that everything washes back down to the coastline. Yeah? But it has to go through your drinking water. It has to go through your land. It's contaminated everything. And we have to gut up and deal with it. We can't ignore it. The average person in Seattle, if they were lucky, they stayed indoor all the time, never opened the doors very often or the windows. They were only breathing in 10 hot radioactive particles a day. You only got to breathe in one on one day to have an autoimmune illness over the next decade or even sooner. If you're doing it every day, there's 1,800 diseases that are going to show up. Like the study I showed you on the dogs with just one dose, not 10, the dogs weren't getting 10 hot radioactive particles a day. They got one dose, and it was nowhere near what these people got every day. But they, they withheld the data because they were afraid you guys were going to freak out because they didn't do their job and they hid it away and they're afraid you weren't going to give them any more money for nuclear. Because nuclear is the biggest money thing on the planet. It's just, it's destroying everything. It always has. There's six times more breast cancer. Government delayed the level seven to ease people into the harshness of the reality that they hid it away from them all the way up until you had the accident. That is the problem with nuclear. You're going to have 40 years of great stuff and then it blows up and you lose your country. You lose your your farms, you lose your animals, you lose your pets, you lose your biodiversity, you lose the ecosystem. And so they roll out PR firms to demonize the handful of 
of people that dare make a stand, that dare say, hey, wait a second. It's not like a banana, folks. How, and then d their response is, how dare you? How dare you call us out? How dare you make a stand? Who do you think you are? We're allowed to murder everything on the planet. That's how the industry works. That's how it thinks. That's how it operates. That's how it conducts itself. And there's no one to hold them accountable. The police won't go and arrest these lawyers. When people say it's like a banana and a potato chip, do you think they went home, never went home and laughed their ass off all night long about all the people that would have watched it and believed it? You think they never went and made fun about it before they went and done it? Watch all the idiots in here while I talk about bananas and potato chips. That's what they say every time they do it, in every lecture. We've called out hundreds of them. There's an endless stream of academics and journalists and scientists, media, that will gladly say those words and then laugh at your, well, they'll laugh at you fighting and say, no, it's not a little banana. They'll protect that in the comment section. They'll go in and fight with you, even though they know it's not true. Because that's what they do. They're there to tell you to lie, to cover it up. So the big corporations will kick back with advertisement. You think about uh, Swiss, short particles traveling across Pacific. You think about all these institutions that have come out and modeled your research, including Canada, including NOAA in America and OSHA. I dine over large sections of the U.S. and Canada. Don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. Shut up. Season 137, plume forecast. You can't ignore it. You can't get away with it. You can't disappear it. You can't switch it off. You can't pretend it didn't happen. You can't pretend it's not going to affect you. You can't pretend it's not affecting your loved ones and your children. No matter how much money they're paying you, you can pretend for a little bit longer, but your money ain't going to help your loved ones. The money you're getting by demonizing me is not going to help your children. You're not going to be able to save them because you kept them here and you knew better. That's why they'll despise you in the near future when they find out the truth. They'll, know, they'll find you for what you are. The people that are manipulating and destroy, trying to destroy me. Well, I shouldn't say trying. They have destroyed me in every sense of the word. I just won't accept it. Because I don't lie. Because I'm showing you the documentation constantly, endlessly, repetitively, in pure desperation that somebody will gut up in the media and support me. Someone will gut up in the celebrity world and support me. Someone will gut up in any of those major celebrities in sports or in music or anywhere else in art. That's all it takes is one of them to say, I support Dana Durnford. I looked at his information. He absolutely 100% is honest. And he provides the documentation constantly as he's talking. And actually spent 15,000 miles on the Canadian coastline. In 260 days, the ocean is dying. If I don't support him now, somebody else is going to get the jump. And then I'll be sorry I didn't support him. Because that's it. There's only one person out there ever going to get that opportunity in the celebrity or academic world. To say I supported Dana Durnford before the truth be, is known. Not that I care about that. It's just that that influence can change the game. That influence from a single celebrity out there who says to hell with it. I made enough money. I'm secured enough. I got enough stashed away. I got enough businesses to last. If it blows back in my face, I'll be okay. And that the world will support me from supporting and doing the right moral and ethical thing. And you'll be the only celebrity on the planet with that status. And you'll reap rewards Hollywood can never bestow upon you for that. That has to happen, unfortunately. I already know who my celebrities are. They've stand alongside of me so thick and through the worst of the worst. But we, we do, we do need, and uh, we not need, but we will have at some point to support. At some point, we will get that recognition. At some point, we will move out of there. And I hope it's somebody else just like me just articulating. I don't care. As long as the story is told and told properly. I couldn't care less who it is. But I'll be watching. I'll be paying attention. I'll be doing my bean counting. And I'll be ready to, to come out with a descending opinions if necessary. This is not a game. You, the, your loved ones, lives, your friends, your pets, the 8 million species on this planet, I can assure you this is not a game and that the stakes couldn't possibly be higher, that you couldn't possibly have uh, outside of a meteorite coming directly at us. That would get everybody in motion. 
But because you couldn't see it and you couldn't smell it and you couldn't hear it and you couldn't feel it and you couldn't pick it up. But it's deer like you're looking at right now. You see? There's no Geiger counter. My Geiger counter smurfed up anyway. Let's go double check. Geiger counter showing 70. 55 is an evacuation zone. 79, it'll climb. I gotta go and reset that camera, I suppose. Let's wind it down. We got 10 minutes. 15 main incidences of radioactive, uh, radioactivity leaks at Fukushima. Now, 408 million billion becquels of iodine-131 is insignificant compared to the actual numbers. Because you've got to realize that a gram of this would be 88 times 37 billion. Right? So this is how they manipulate you. You know, I can show you, and I have showed you studies, of where they went into the middle of the Pacific Ocean to dump one-sixth of a gram because the numbers they used from the 50s and the 60s, when people didn't understand it, right, would seem like a lot. But in reality, when you've done the numbers on it, you find out that it was about what, what they admitted to was one-sixth of a gram. So they hired a great big ship, went out to the middle of the Pacific. And that was only a couple of weeks ago we were covering that one. They went out to the middle of the Pacific and dumped a quarter of a gram, or a sixth of a gram. So who, like, who in their right mind would believe that? Outside of Congress, who accepted that? Outside of the EPA, who certified that? Outside of the government organizations that actually done it and didn't correct the actual numbers and say, actually, it was a big ship full of 45-gallon drums. Because it traces back to them, and they don't want their children or grandchildren or loved ones to find out what they've done. Because they know how evil and demented and twisted and vicious, they really truly are. But it don't matter, they got a nice home, they got a nice car, and people call them sir or ma'am. And they can pretend they didn't do what they done. And nobody will know any of the people that made money off it. Let's wind it down and finish it up. So Chernobyl was a paper towel compared to Japan's reactors. Chernobyl was irrelevant compared to Jan's, Japan's reactors. Chernobyl wasn't even a drop in a bucket compared to Japan's reactors. Chernobyl was one-third the size. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. But yet, Kofi Anna had said over 3 million children in Belarus and Ukraine were permanently disabled and affected by the fallout from Chernobyl. All you hear about from Chernobyl is cesium-137. But cesium-137 is bad. It's just a tracer doll. And you can't have one without all the other. Let's finish it up. Fukushima released 100 quadrillion becquels of cesium into the atmosphere? No, because they're talking about the venting. They're not talking about the detonated reactors like the pictures I showed you before. They're not talking about the missing spent fuel pool. They're not talking about the waste sites all along the coastline that were swept up through that wood chipper for 400 kilometers with all the victims. They're not talking about the chain reaction in the inventories. Humanity as a whole has literally never experienced something like Fukushima and will be fighting this radiation till the very end of time. Remember when he sent the balloons over from Japan? Remember how prolific and how many places they showed up? Do you think for one second the radiation is not doing the exact same thing? Of course not. 7.7 trillion is nothing. No comment from the EPA as the plume is cruising. Neptunium-239 uh, is like uh, um, technetium-99 or americium-241, which is just like plutonium-uranium. It's the same stuff that killed the dogs. It has the same kind of emitter. It works the exact same way. The radioactive substances rose. Now, they didn't need to go five kilometers in the air because you're talking about particles that are a 1,000 or more, tens of thousands, even 100,000 times smaller than the particle from automobile and industry pollution in Asia. And it's hundreds of thousands of times smaller than the ash and um, forest fire pollution that comes across the Pacific Ocean uh, in 45 days after major forest fires. But you're not, you know, we don't, the, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from spraying the salt water on the reactors, these are like nuclear bombs going off every few minutes because you're creating fissionable product, atomizing, aerosoling it, and releasing it into the environment. The radioactive particle from Fukushima is like a poison gas. Except it's not going to kill you in a few years, not immediately. It's going to kill you in a few years, not immediately. 
burn through the risk. North America has received a large fallout. And Japan had 860,000 excess cancers right after, within a year. And cancer is the last one to show up. Diabetes has skyrocketed there. Alzheimer's, dementia, autism. Radioactivity is being released directly into the atmosphere. March the 15, 2011, four days after. Uh, 23,000 times higher than what they emit in that little tiny spot. Total estimate, uh, CCM to the year triple that they emit. That, that's another study. Uh, widespread nuclear fallout caused by spent fuel. Yeah, it's curium, not iodine, not cesium. Curium is the biggest byproduct and acts just like plutonium. And plutonium is deadly. Burns a hole through your lung, goes right into your bones, mutates your stem cells. U.S. government model is only based upon a couple of days release. It's not based upon the melted reactors, not based upon the inventories. Okay, let's finish up. We got six more to go. This side, four more to go. Government, that's right, this is where we left off on that side. We got four more to go. So 40 million backwards of iodine-131 with an eight-day half-life. It's a tracer, and everything else is there. But you can find it easily. You know how to find it. It's easy to find. People are easy to find and count it. This is an event because it washes back down to the coastline. 1,500 atoms per cubic meter of air while you're walking around. That's a death sentence. That's a death sentence. We've got to come up with solutions. We can't ignore it anymore. We're in trouble. This planet is hurtling at a brick wall at 1,000 miles an hour, and everybody's arguing about the radio channel. You better tune in. You better pay attention. You better start learning. You better start accepting. You better start making preparations. And you better start trying to come up with solutions. We've got to come together as a species. We've got to throw away our bigotry and our divide and our races and our hatred and that we all have the same hopes and dreams for our loved ones. And as such, we all have those same hopes and dreams for the future. Except for a small handful of people that are intent upon you not knowing because they know their life will be destroyed. So it's better to destroy me. The police and everybody should protect me. I should be given free reign to tell the planet because I'm the one who got stuck with the job and who don't want it. If I wanted the job, I would have done everything different. Trust me. I kept praying somebody else would show up, and that's a mistake, and I regret that mistake. I'm horrified that I made that mistake. Damage at Unit 2, the only building that looks intact, was the one that drove, made everybody abandon ship, allegedly. But number two is destroyed. You see this picture here? In the whole coastline of Canada, i never seen that once. In the whole coastline of Canada, a total of around, and even at one spot, I've seen a total of around 14,000 birds, usually a total of about 11 species, not to 300 species plus. But this is normal to me. This is what looks normal to me. This is what I understand. This is what I never saw. 260 days, 15,000 miles. I'll just end it on that and come over and say hi. That's a representation of uh, the coastline of Canada, an accurate one. And the arrows are just... Uh, where I was too for extended periods doing surveys. That's all up at the nuclearproctologist.org. I went up on this vessel. That's the GPS of Louise Narrows. I'm going to show you two pictures. We'll come over and say goodnight to everybody. Here's a picture of me on the beach in Louise Narrows. And that's what's supposed to be in Louise Narrows. That's what it's supposed to look like. But it doesn't look like that anymore. It doesn't have that anymore. No longer will you see that. It will never be seen again. It'll be naked. Now, I know that because I went there myself. And I've done the entire coastline. And it's all up at the website. It's free for anybody to use to make a documentary. We've done that so that the world could have an opportunity, but it wasn't given that opportunity. And so now we're going to fight. And that I'm so grateful to get to this, to get to this point where we're going to do the lectures, and that is going to change the game no matter what. That will change the game. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. What can I say? You know, I, I, I'm going to stream no matter what. I got to come tell the story no matter what. No matter what you do to me, like if I get no views, I'm still going to stream. I'm still going to tell the story. There's nothing about me will change. And nothing in the future about me will change. I'll, I'll always be this person that you know. That is who I am. That's who I've always been. I can't change something 
just broken, okay? You can't change it. You can't fix it up or anything else. It is what it is, and it knows it. And I was happy to be nobody all my life. Proud to be nobody my entire life. I'm thrilled to be a nobody, and I would love to have that back. I would love to be nobody <laughs> again. But that would be wrong. That would be selfish. That, that would be an abomination. That would be in a betrayal um, to my entire ancestry and to everybody else and to the entire universe and every species on the planet. It would be an outright betrayal. It would be so selfish. I don't have that in me. I don't know what that's like. And so is, and many of you are the same way I know. Believe me, I know. But this time is going to be different. This time... We're going to get that opportunity. This time, we're not going to be the ones that faltered. And that we will always be remembered as the generation who said no and who fought for the right for the future generations, who fought for every species on the planet, who fought, who fought with everything they got, with no remorse, with no looking back, because there was no way to do that. Because there was no... Whose responsibility is it? We, we put a system in place and then we walked away. And when we finally went and looked at it, we found out that it was so broken that it had no intention of telling anybody anything. And so we took on the job. And that we have won. And by the end of this week, uh, the world will understand. I'm sure of it. In the next two weeks, by the time we do the second lecture, Nuclear is done. And that the future is secured and trying, at least trying. Not no, no longer blowing, not no longer complacent, not no longer abrogating their responsibilities, but focused, authentic, genuine, concerned people are going to rise around the planet to the challenges and come up with solutions in increments and then in the steamrolling and then in unity and that it doesn't matter race or nationality or religion or poverty or wealth. We're all in the same boat. And if we want any future for anything on the planet, we, we will act. And if not, then we will perish. And that our history should perish also. Hugs for everybody. Particularly Elaine. Karen, CJ, Alex, and Thirst. Hugs for everybody. What can I say? To, to me, I see the beginning coming this Friday. I see opportunity. I see the great divide. I see people that are not intelligent enough to comprehend it right away, but will be consoled by their loved ones and friends who did take the time to understand and watch this material and have a good foundation. It's very visual. It's, it's, it's very calming. It's reassuring. And it's the way it's going to be. There is no way back. There's only a way forward. We got it right here. As we tell the truth, we be honest. People are adults. People will, will adapt. The same way you would adapt if there was a meteorite coming and the whole planet was working and they were coming up with solutions, you would have hope. When this planet works as one, you will feel that too.